Uh, thanks so much for, for joining me, former Prime Minister. Um, in, in terms of where things stand at the moment, this latest attack aside, there's been a bit of a pause. What's your assessment of the, of the state of the war and uh, the time frame from here? Uh, I think Mr. Putin continued to uh, getting, uh, producing some kind of uh, victories to, to, to report to people of Russia, uh, which is under, majority of them under foolish propaganda, and uh, they absolutely uh, lost the reality. Uh, and, and in fact, just, I think, just uh, the, the enlarged occupation of the territory of Donbass, which uh, I think Mr. Putin, is the, the, prime, the, the prime goal is. And then, of course, to keep this land corridor which Mr. Putin already created between Crimea and Donbass and the, the, the city of Kherson and part of Kherson region that's already under Putin's occupation. occupation. I think that would be some kind of middle goal for Mr. Putin to achieve and to announce victory. He needs victory and he needs to report to people of Russia that uh, the operation, as he said, just completed and they achieved something. And he believes that the West would face with the political fatigue and uh, that would uh, the situation as it is now. I mean, just the level of territory of occupation would stay for a few years, and after that, just Mr. Putin will continue to have his aggression on other or the same direction. That will be future. Uh, in terms of, uh, as you mentioned, there, his commitment is is one thing. What about the time he has to maintain that commitment to domestically? Is he under pressure uh, in any way, shape, or form, or not? I think yes. This coming autumn, that will that will be the the, the point when you know, I would think I would say some kind of uh, uh, new questions uh, and uh, people's mind would appear on ordinary people, uh, and they will start start asking asking this question, and uh, propaganda will not be able to provide appropriate answers. Mr. Putin needs victory. He needs to report victory. He needs to to, to be seen strong. Uh, not defeated, but strong as uh, with, the, with the victorious result. And of course, just those supplies of heavy weapons to Ukraine and this, um, uh, I would say, on the large scale operations by Ukrainian army using this new equipment, of course, demonstrates that Ukrainian army could come soon, I believe, to the level comparable, I mean, from the military point of view, comparable with the Putin's army. That will be, I would say, the turning point. I think that what could come after the training of Ukrainian militaries, it could come, such a situation could appear just in October, November, I guess. Uh, one other thing that could come in October, November would be uh, Russia cutting off uh, gas supplies uh, to Europe as the temperature drops. Do you expect him to employ that tactic or, or almost quite the opposite? Is he fighting to keep that uh, revenue stream coming in? Uh, I, I think that's that's absolutely absolutely possible. Uh, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, I guess right now, Mr. Putin technically, technologically, is not prepared to cut the gas supply right now. But of course, his this arm, this weapon, he gets in his hands. And in fact, he couldn't stop just exploration of, of natural gas, but uh, could uh, could prepare. That's why he's looking for another supplies to to to, to China, and um, that's what uh, that's what uh, they're doing right now. But uh, of course, this weapon exists, and uh, uh, and the 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 cash uh, foreign exchange inflow out of selling of oil and gas. Uh, of course, is reducing, but Mr. Putin cannot use this because of the sanctions, and they accumulated on the accounts on the Gazprom bank, and uh, uh, there is no demand for foreign exchange in Russia because just all supplies of all imp of all export to Russia and all purchases of those goods just stopped. And that's why just the, the, the exchange rate of ruble is, um, uh, is quite strange and people don't understand what's happened, why, why the currency ruble is uh, appreciated so heavily uh, while, while inflation is high and uh, the GDP go, uh, go, uh, the phase falls down. Just uh, the economy is squeezing right now, but um, the, the currency is appreciated. That is um, the, the strange situation. Now, in fact, uh, Central Bank continues to apply some kind of market policy while just the government uh, produces completely different. That's what they have to settle something just, and I mean, in terms of policy, whether they go in the same way or just get, accept the total isolation and create other instruments of keeping economy.
So, but I mean, let's explore that a little bit further. I mean, how, how much is the Russian economy suffering at the moment, even if there are some public signs like the currency that might suggest otherwise? Are, are things uh, on break, a breaking point? Is, is Putin about to face riots or, or is that still some way away? Uh, I think uh, uh, there is no no uh, expectation for riots in the, in the upcoming future and uh, the foreseeable future. But of course, in the, in, the, uh, in the future in general, of course, it could be the case. But uh, in fact, just inflation is high, twenty percent just as an international methodology. But for this overall inflation, but if you pick up just four points for for uh, goods and services, for instance, medicine, uh, food stuff, um, uh, communal services, and transportation, you will get inflation like 50%. That is half of population or even more just spending, have this expenditure only on these directions. For them, inflation is very, very high. That's why I'm saying by autumn, just the negativism or a negative attitude to the whole situation will increase. That's why Putin needs victory to report mm -hmm. that uh, he already achieved something. And this the West already just faced with the political fatigue and is not going to, to, uh, to ex, uh, um, uh, provide more and more billions to Ukraine to keep this war uh, for exhausting. Uh, the, that's why I think just that is will be expectation. Just I hope and I feel this coming autumn would change the whole situation because of different reasons. Uh, the sanctions, six packages of sanctions would would bring a first negative result. And, and of course, economists will report that um, GDP will lost 10 percent of GDP. And inflation is very high. And secondly, just Ukrainian army would start having just more successful operations on the battlefield. Uh, in terms of the nuances of Russian politics uh, in the short term, uh, talk us through the significance of, of what's gone on uh, recently, that even though Parliament was in recess, uh, President Putin's called for a special se session. What's going on there? Uh, a special session is nothing, uh, I would say, uh, nothing special. Special session just to finalise just the, the, the spring session, I think, just and uh, to adopt those laws which uh, they started to consider. Um, but in fact, uh, uh, if something extraordinary and necessary is necessary for Mr. Putin, he will call them immediately. But uh, I don't think just lower house with Duma is it's, uh, important for him on this operation. He needs permission from the upper chamber, but he already got all permissions for this war. And that's why he doesn't need anything. Just uh, I don't think that Mr. Putin has prepared some kind of so just statement for mobilization or for army, for instance. Mm -hmm. I completely exclude this because that will be it will be demonstration that demonstration of his weakness. That means just uh, uh, his uh, military operation, as he calls this, uh, uh, it means unsuccessful. That's he calling for, for the whole war, full scale war, which he, he just doesn't want to, to, to announce as a war. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, that's what I'm saying, just the, the, they already facing with the problems for to mobilize, have mobilization of, uh, on, a, on a voluntary mm -hmm. basis. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, Prime, uh, former right. Prime Minister. I just, just to round things off, because we're nearly uh, out of time, uh, just wondering how you think all of this ends, uh, particularly on, on your side, on the Russian side and for, for President Putin. And, and a reminder, of course, to our viewers that, that you served as his Prime Minister, though early in his term, 2000 to 2004, and have since uh, taken a position uh, against him. Yes, I felt uh, with Putin, who was completely different Putin. At that time, Putin was supporter of reforms of my cabinet. Right now, Putin just uh, pursues a contrary policy, absolutely contrary to all those values just um, I, I devoted to. Uh, and that's the, the end. We all believe that um, uh, Ukraine would defend and would announce victory soon, uh, sooner, in a few months, I hope, uh, that they defended their territory and would start, uh, would start, would start uh, liberalization and would, uh, uh, would get, uh, would, would install their territory, territorial integrity. And Putin should be seen as defeated. In this case, just the, the changes, political changes will start in Russia. And the uh, inner circle would start reconsidering what you do to him. And, those people who support people, who support Putin now, they will start reconsidering the whole attitude to the war, first of all, and secondly, to Putin himself. And, that's, and they will start calling for changes. I hope that process will start in a few months. Of course, it will not be overnight, 
but uh, the, the beginning would, could, could, could bring a fruit, uh, the, the desirable fruit, and, and, and I would say one year or year and a half. I think just changes in Russia are inevitable as soon as, as Putin is defeated in Ukraine. So, so it's possible that Vladimir Putin, in some way or another, is out of office in Russia uh, within 12 months? Uh, I don't exclude this. Yes, I don't exclude. It, it's absolutely is direct direct connection with the results of this war with Ukraine. If Ukraine wins or just protects itself, it means just at the beginning of the end of Putin's era.